Hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. I've completely forgotten which number we're at. It's some number up there. It's um, 100 something. <laughs> 117. 117. Wow. You know, who, who would have thought we'd have lasted this long? <laughs> so if you have time, always check back the previous recordings. But today, today, we're all about the video. And, and I'm delighted to be joined by Kevin Skade from Ayrshire College. And we'll be looking at what Ayrshire College is going to present in terms of its video resources. So Kevin, over to you. Um, thanks, Kenji. Um, so before I get started, I just want to make a bit of an apology for just being a big giant head um, on your screen. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a working webcam. I have been using the excuse that my guinea pig ate my webcam since about November, um, but I haven't managed to get that fixed yet. So uh, unfortunately, yeah, you're stuck with my floating head here. Um, but yeah, Kenji, I just want to um, just first of all, just say thanks for inviting me, but also thanks for inviting me back um, because actually what I'm going to be talking about here today actually has its roots in something we actually did as a virtual bridge session quite a few months back. So if it's okay, I'm just going to kind of share my screen and just kind of share a few kind of slides um, here with you. I should also mention that um, I've actually got Tammy Woods who works for ClipView um, and she's actually joined the session here today as well. So if there are any um, questions to do with ClipView as a platform that I can't answer, then Tammy will be able to kind of step in and, and hopefully keep me right. Um, but yeah, so today's session is all about what we're kind of calling Ayrshire College Presents, which is a brand name we'll come up with to talk about um, the idea of sharing video lessons within a, a wider community. Um, and as I kind of mentioned, this has its roots on basically a virtual bridge session that was delivered probably back in October or November um, by one of our lecturers called Chris McKenzie. Now, unfortunately, they let me name that session and I called it Art Attack because I love alliteration. Um, but if you ever want to see the kind of video of that session, it's still available on YouTube, but Chris did this brilliant session on basically how um, creating video lessons um, as an art lecture, which is something he had not really kind of thought about doing before, because it was all kind of, you know, meant to be hands-on demonstration, how that had really kind of transformed his teaching and how the students really responded well to them. And it was a great session and really, really well received. And afterwards, I kind of started thinking, you know, Chris has done great material. We've got so many other lecturers in the college creating great material. And it's just such a pity that the audience who get to see that great content can sometimes be really, really small. You know, um, we're only seeing it either with the, 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 the students and lecturers who are, are delivering or, or seeing the material or just with small quote groups within the college. And we really kind of thought, maybe let's have discussions about can we share um, some of that content within a kind of wider community? Um, so that kind of got some kind of chats happening really within the college. First of all, about you know who we'd like to, sh to, sh to share content with, but what type of content we would like to kind of share um, as well. And okay, first of all, we did want to kind of share the content with the college community, but we also thought it'd be quite nice to share that content with schools and other external partners as well. Um, so that's where we kind of initially started having the discussions. And then we had to think, if we do this, how are we going to do it? What platforms um, are we actually going to use um, to share that content? And that's where things got a bit difficult um, because there's not a common video platform um, across the whole kind of sector. Um, some colleges are using Microsoft Stream, which is what we're using within the college to deliver video lessons to our students. And that's only um, available within the college. Other colleges are using Instagram TV um, and, you know, there's so many other different kind of platforms out there. So we had to think, you know, what platform should they use? So the obvious one is YouTube. Um, so I thought, is YouTube going to be a suitable platform for us? And I'm lazy. Um, so YouTube for me just seemed like a lot of hard work, not in terms of putting the videos onto YouTube, but in promoting the content once it was up there. And, and there's nothing more embarrassing than having a YouTube channel that has like two views. Um, so we kind of thought what we really want is actually to set something up so that someone else does all the hard work um, for us. Um, so that's really when we started thinking about using ClickView because uh, there was a couple of different reasons for it. Well, first of all, we knew um, as ClickView customers ourselves, we kind of knew that over the last few years, ClickView has been really heavily adopted within the FE sector within Scotland. In fact, it's harder now to find a college that's not on ClickView than it is to find colleges that are in ClickView. But it's also really, really popular within the kind of schools community as well. So um, it really increased the visibility 
um, of our videos by putting it on there, but also uh, allowed us to make them publicly visible as well. So that kind of um, basically kind of um, killed kind of two birds with one stone there. Um, so when we started thinking about ClickView, um, I had a wee look about it and ClickView has this area called Featured Channels. And these are channels that are visible um, to any ClickView client once they kind of log in. So you can see um, City of Glasgow already has a kind of feature channel sitting up there. Um, there's a range of different kind of feature channels and they're visible within ClickView, but they're also visible um, externally there as well. And so you can see our wee drawing with Chris McKenzie um, channel is now sitting in there as well. So that was kind of partly why we kind of thought about ClickView, but it also kind of met a few different other requirements as well. Because ClickView is supported um, closed captioning um, um, and we could get stats back on video views as well. And also I have to say that um, Tammy volunteered to do a lot of the promotion um, for us as well, which took a lot of the work out of my hands. So that is really what I was looking for, for so someone else to do all the work um, for me so that I didn't have to. Um, so in terms of the, once we had decided on the platform, we then had to think about what the criteria were going to be for the videos that we should put up there. And one of the key things for me was we didn't want to add any extra work onto lecturers. We didn't want them creating videos just specifically to put them onto our featured channels. So these had to be videos that were already being used in the college to deliver learning and teaching. Um, the other thing was the videos already had to have transcripts or subtitles that had been checked um, for the kind of content because again I didn't want to give myself any extra work in going through and, and re-editing all the transcripts because you can you know what auto transcripting um, can be like there can be some weird and wonderful um, things that come up and also um, despite the fact that we do um, encourage our lecturers to have an awareness of copyright and accessibility when they put material up um, we had to double check that any videos that we put up onto this external platform didn't contain any copyright music. Um, so that were the three kind of main criteria that I came up with when I decided what videos um, we were going to put up. So because I had been working with Chris in the past and had seen his videos, I knew the content, I knew the quality, I knew that um, when he had put music onto his videos, um, they were coming from um, um, they were coming from um, non-commercial licenses. Um, I knew they met all the requirements. So I thought the first channel I'm going to start with is, is Chris McKenzie's um, drawing channel. So that was really um, where we kind of got started with it. So that then led to an email between me and Tammy. And I just said to Tammy, um, how do we get started in getting our feature channel up here? So um, Tammy basically gave me, a, gave me a bit of information. It's really what we needed to get started was a name for the channel. So we decided to call it Drawing with Chris McKenzie. I did probably try and come up with something with a lot of alliteration in it that didn't work. Um, so we went with that. Um, a banner and a logo. And then we kind of thought, well, it would be quite nice to actually have more than one channel. Um, so we decided to create an overall brand, which we called Ayrshire College Presents, which we're going to use as... As, as an overall banner for all of our um, video channels on ClickView. So we then needed just a wee channel description. And then before we could go ahead, we had to just send six videos. So we had to have six videos ready to go onto the channel and we had to send them across to ClickView so they could just double check for quality and, and any issues with them before we put them up. So um, we sent that through and really within about a week or so we had our channel and it was all ready and, and, all ready and set up to go. But in terms of the technical bit of getting the videos up onto the channel, first of all, I had to download them from Microsoft Stream and then upload them onto ClickView just to make them um, accessible within that channel. But I also didn't want to have to recreate all the subtitles again because we had already went through that process on Microsoft Stream of editing the subtitles, editing the transcript files, making sure there was nothing um, untoward coming up within there. Um, so rather than using ClickView's auto captioning um, within there to recreate the subtitles, I decided what I would do is, is download the subtitle file from Microsoft Stream and then re-upload it onto ClickView. So my wee process for this was, first of all, um, to download the transcript file from Microsoft Stream and it comes through as a web VDT file. And unfortunately, ClickView doesn't support web VDT as its subtitles or closed caption. It supports SRT. Um, so I then had to upload that transcript file to this online subtitle converter that I found here. And once that then created that SRT file, 
I then uploaded that onto ClickView, which then gave me um, those captions sitting there within my videos. Once the channel was there and we had it ready to go just before the kind of Christmas period, it's really then just been a case of trying to get it promoted. Um, and that's where um, it's really been great to just be able to kind of reach out to kind of Tammy because Tammy has this great network of, of all the ClickView customers um, throughout kind of Scotland, whether they're in schools or whether they're in colleges. So she um, basically sent out a mail shot just to let people know that we're, we're channel called Drawn with Chris McKenzie was live. Um, so that's started the kind of ball rolling in that sense of it. Doing things like this and um, and also kind of seeing it with, with her own networks is also helping us to promote it. But also Tammy has organized this arts community event within ClickView as well, which is on the 26th of February, um, I think. So I've put the link in there if anyone wants to kind of sign up for it. So um, both myself and Chris will be on there promoting the channel and I feel as if we're on some sort of promotional tour about this channel just now so I'm feeling that I should get t-shirts or, or something all kind of made up for it um, but on top and on top of the me and Chris talking about this channel um, I think Tammy's intention is to try and create a kind of a wider um, arts community discussion going on there as well so there'll, there'll be more events happening than just me and Chris um, and we also, as I kind of mentioned, our channel has a public URL as well. So anyone who's not a ClickView um, customer can still access the videos within that channel there as well, just by using that public URL. So I, again, I think this is one of the things we're probably going to ask for your help with um, in terms of helping us to promote that channel a bit more as well. Because when you go into it, you'll see there's a sharing link. Um, and if you can share that channel again with your own um, networks as well, that's going to help us get those views up um, there as well. So that was our first kind of channel which we decided we were going to concentrate on drawing with Chris McKenzie but our, our intention is to create a number of click view channels um, for different kind of subject areas um, but one of the kind of the issues that I currently have is is trying to identify what content I should be putting up and make that available to people so um, how do you identify content that's suitable um, for sharing um, within our kind of video kind of sharing channels. And this is something I do within the kind of college. Um, you see this, are you a stream superstar? I don't know if it's the same in, in your own institutions, but lecturers, they, they don't always um, think that there's any reason or, or any any benefit in, in basically shouting about the great content that they're doing. And so many lecturers are creating great content out there, but I think just because they're, they're doing it on a daily basis as part of their um, their normal learning and teaching, they don't really realise just how great that stuff is. So every two weeks, what I try and do within the college is I send out a mail shot and I basically ask lecturers to either put themselves forward or put a colleague forward um, as a team's trailblazer, a stream superstar, a sway superhero, a click view champion. You see, I really love my alliteration. Um, and what I then do is, is basically put together a wee paragraph as a case study of, of what that lecturer has been doing, give them a wee um, wonky badge like this, um, and then maybe even show a wee video of how the, to, how the lecturer has created that content so that other lecturers can learn and create that material for themselves. So that's one way where I get to identify some of the great content that's being created there within the college. The other way is really just by speaking to lecturers, speaking to our, our curriculum managers. And um, in order for me to, to maybe try and work out what's the best people for me to speak at within the speak to within the college, what I've also done within our call uh, within our channel is I've put up this video content request form. And basically what I'm asking people to do is if you think there's videos you would like to see as your college putting up on the ClickView Share channel. Tell us, tell us what type of content you want to see. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll go and speak to the relevant curriculum managers, the relevant staff, see what video materials they've got available, make sure it meets the requirements that we've set up. And once I've done that, then I will then speak to ClickView and see about creating a new feature channel for that particular video content. Um, so that's really the kind of end of my slideshow. But what I'm now going to do is I'm actually just going to show you a wee kind of um, demo of what the, the channel looks like itself. So just bear with me a second to stop this here and I'll just go and do a new one. Um, so on ClickView itself, um, as I kind of mentioned, when you're a, a ClickView client, you'll actually be able to log in 
go to the feature channel area. And you'll see there's all these different feature channels within it. And our drawing with Chris McKenzie channel is sitting there like that. And right now, I think we've got something like 13 videos sitting on there, but Chris is producing more videos on a weekly basis. So I'll be adding more content to this channel like as we go along. Um, so you can see here. And just to give you an example of some of the content that Chris has put up there, I'm just going to see if I can play this one okay. Um, Quick recap clip, we're introducing a limited range of tone to our gestural drawings. So as a video playing so okay, this is there, a gesture you? drawing using limited tone, where the tone is restricted to the mid of the paper. Um, we're using charcoal for our dark areas, chalk for our light areas, and sienna pastel. Um, for a little injection of warmth, but also to use as a mid-tone. So I'm not going to play the full video because, um, you know, you can go in and see them all for yourself, um, either by logging into ClickView or by going to that public URL that I've put into the um, the, the PowerPoint slides here. Um, but the other thing I did kind of mention, um, so if I go back to my homepage here from my channel, um, and just go here, here is the link um, to the video request form as well. So if you've got any ideas within your institution, what sort of videos you would like to see as a college sharing um, through the ClipView network, then please go in there, let us know through that form. And as I say, I'll then have the conversations internally to identify the videos and see about getting some content up there for you um, as well. So really that's that's all I wanted to to kind of talk about and kind of um, share there with you. So I hope that's been kind of useful. And I'll now just kind of stop sharing my screen and just maybe see if anyone's got any questions. That's brilliant, Kevin. Um, <laughs> I, I I love watching Chris's videos. <laughs> I, I, I genuinely think they're they're excellent. Now, um, certainly if anyone would like to ask Kevin a question, I'm just going to nip in there first though. Um, Kevin, what kind of support are you giving to lecturers to produce the videos? Because Chris's work is, is it looks really polished with with the music, the backtrack. Are, are you giving help or assistance with the video editing and putting We're not together? creating the videos for them. We're just giving them the, the advice um, round about it. So certainly in, in Chris's case um, we had a look at the kind of setup they had within his classroom um, and we just came up with ideas for the hardware he could use so Chris is really just using a tripod with an old camcorder with an SD card um, switched onto it just over his shoulder as he's doing the kind of video recordings um, and then he's just using iMovie um, and again we just showed him how quickly to use iMovie to put the, the audio and the edit in there together um, and that's it. So we, we maybe do a bit of training and a bit of advice, but we're not creating the content for the lecturers. And I think that's one of the things that's key for us. This has to be content that's being used on a daily basis within the college. That's excellent. Um, so any questions? Jason? I always got one. Uh, thanks very much for that. And they look like great resources. Um, I've been around for a while and seen many great resources uh, being made available. And again, it's uh, to uh, Ayrshire College's credit uh, that, uh, uh, that they're out there. Um, of course, the issue is always getting other people to use them, no matter how good they are. Are you pr looking to provide any support, any good ideas as to how we get over that reluctance sometimes for curriculum staff to use uh, community created materials? Um, well, I'm hoping Tammy can do a lot of kind of help for us in terms of promoting it, not just with the colleges and with the schools, but then um, we would like to get some case studies back from those schools and colleges on how they're using that content and then feed that back to the kind of wider community. So hopefully just try and get a kind of bit of like a snowball effect going um, and yeah, um, just see how it, where it goes from there. Can I maybe just add something to that as well, Kevin? I think... Um, particularly within the school communities um, across Scotland, there's a new um, sort of project being done by Education Scotland, which is called um, West OS, which looks at videos that have been created by the regional improvement collaboratives. And we've been, at ClickView, we've been working closely to host that collection for them. So there's definitely um, a, a real excitement across the schools community of uh, 
educators creating videos and sharing videos across the network that are good quality, that are, uh, you know, checked and consistent and um, it means that they don't need to double up. So I think we are, um, you've got some amazing content on things like you spoke about YouTube earlier, Kevin, and there is, there's some amazing educational content, but it's the filtering and it's the finding what's on there that's been approved and if you look up and you might see those videos by Chris McKenzie but to begin with you look and go oh well that's only got 10 watches on oh, no, I'm not going to bother watching those I'll jump to something else and you can miss some really good content whereas if you've got it housed in an area like the feature channels or so on there's a confidence that these are educational videos they've been checked to be of a certain quality and standard um, and so it's it is getting good traction that way from from educators. Thanks, Tammy. Can I just ask, um, you mentioned before about submitting six videos for quality assurance. Um, what, what kind of quality checks are being employed there? Yeah, so one more for you, Tammy. Yeah, sure. Um, so at ClickView, when you host a featured channel, um, we check that the videos are um, educationally relevant and that they are um, created specifically for education. So we'll look at a few things from copyright side of things to make sure that it's you know compliant with that um, to the the actual sort of standard of recording, but also the content would be relevant for us to share across the educational community. So we're not going to um, be putting content up there and um, sort of promoting and authorizing content that is not to sort of educationally relevant and meeting the needs of other other educators. Okay, great. And uh, Jay Keys, you have a, a question. I, I want Hi. to say Jill, but... Um, it's Jill, yes. It's Jill. Um, and I have snow here and I've been out walking my dogs this morning so my hair's really curly and that is why I've got my camera off because uh, I just look an absolute riot. Um, my question is, would you be able to do this with students? Um, and I'll tell you why. I'm from the childcare department and the students aren't at placement and we're trying to share good practice. So storytelling activities they would do with children. And I've just actually been on an online, it's called a peep session at Ayrshire College where they have um, children online playing games. And I would like to do something similar, but obviously I wouldn't be recording it with children. Would I be able to record students doing activities and then it could be streamed to like, Play groups or nurseries would that be something that would be acceptable yo i think that's possible but i probably wouldn't look at clickview as a platform for it because that's going to be a public url within clickview um but we do have kind of closed um ways of doing that within the college as well so you can have a conversation with me afterwards and, right, and you know we, we can come up with some ideas about that that would be great thank you Kevin, did you say that you have other channels coming on stream? Um, what other subject areas are you about to launch? Well, th this is where uh, I have big ideas. And, and I, again, I'm looking for, for channels that not only have great uh, content, but that I can use alliteration with. So I'm, I'm looking like uh, channels like uh, Makeup with Michelle and things like that. So um, so um, I'm probably looking at some makeup artistry is probably going to be my next, my next featured channel. And then I'll be looking at things like kind of maths and science channels as well. Um, but first of all, we want to get this one out there. We want to get it established and get the feedback um, going from coming back from from users one one other question that just comes to mind is that when people are searching for resources as as jason puts out and and trying to get that attention one thing that with certainly within the college sector that's appreciated is if content is mapped to qualifications or particular outcomes do you know if there's any plans to add something to the description to say how this potentially relates to existing courses um we haven't got to that, that sort of stage yet. You can see with Chris's one, all I've just done is in the description, I've put that the material can be used as either standalone videos or to help support playing the delivery of the lessons. But I think as we look to kind of further channels, um, we'll try and maybe target a bit more towards um, specific um, levels of kind of qualifications um, in there as well. And Jason. 
if there's nobody else wanting to jump in, um, what about the length of videos and your uh, guidance to people producing? Uh, there's obviously the, the choice between shorter and perhaps more agile to use materials and then longer, more comprehensive, mm -hmm. uh, coherent materials. Um, uh, how did you decide on, on, on the, the, uh, the amount and are you guiding everyone towards the same sort of format? We do um, try and guide lecturers to not create videos that are more than 15 minutes in length. Um, now, there's partly a technical reason for that because we're using Stream mostly as our platform for doing the recordings. So Stream does cut off after 15 minutes anyway, which I think is actually it's, it's a good incentive to, to have lectures create lots of short videos rather than one long, long video. So that is the guidance we kind of give out. We probably say between 10, 15 minutes length um, for each video. Tammy, you had something to add? Oh, sorry. Um, so, and also with regards to Jason's question with length of video, there's been a fair number of studies um, which show that for FE, uh, I think it's six minutes is the optimum video length um, there and uh, breaking it up into, you know, three six minute videos as opposed to doing a uh, a 15 or 20 minute video or so and hold students attention better. Um, there's also kind of four key elements um, that I mean, I can share or I can send to Kevin to share with the group afterwards on, a, um, on producing educational videos, looking at segmenting, weeding out, um, you know, interesting but irrelevant um, kind of entertainment style um, parts and keeping it really educational and then different types of signaling within videos as well which can be helpful for learners to engage with the the content more um, so I'll share with Kevin in case anyone's interested afterwards to to read up on that yeah I I, I remember edX and I, I shared the link below um, had had released that after the millions of views of their their MOOC videos and they'd come up with this magic number of, of six minutes being the ideal attention span of the average viewer. <laughs> so, um, Kevin, um, just, just before we finish up this uh, recorded part of the session, have you come up with any key tips then, following on from what Tammy said, around the kind of advice you give to lecturers when they're producing this kind of video content for their students? Keep it short, keep it snappy, keep it accessible. And don't let your, your jumper get in the way of the camera. Because <laughs> uh, so many of Chris's recordings, when we went to the view the SD card, uh, all we could see was his really jumper. Um, <laughs> I, I look forward to the blooper reel. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> right, just for this, um, the recorded part of this session for you, of, of those of you who are joining us via YouTube, thank you very much for joining. Um, <laughs> thanks uh, to Kevin and everyone here today uh, for the questions and input. I uh, hope you have a chance out there in YouTube land to join us for a live session in the future. But until then, stay safe. <laughs>